Um, so I'm going to present here one of the projects of the Mirtop group. The Mirtop group actually was born one year ago. Um, uh, it's meant to be a proxy for the discussion of a microRNA or a small RNA data analysis. Uh, so today I'm going to talk specifically about the development of a unified format uh, for microRNA data. And yes, I know, another format. Um, but hear me out before judging me. Uh, then at the end, you can just uh, tell me that it's not worthy, but <laughs> hear me out. Um, so actually, in this project, we have a lot of people from different institutions and different backgrounds. Um, the main thing in common is microRNA data somehow. Uh, what I think that is very good, because it creates a very diverse group um, from different perspectives that what I hope uh, will lead to actually give a solution or improvement of the current situation for the microRNA data analysis. So you can go to the web page to read all about what we try to do. Um, I'm going to talk a little bit of microRNA data so you understand the concept that we uh, are dealing with and why we decided to do something about it. Um, we'll just present to the current situation and the motivation that leads us to actually try to find uh, somehow a format uh, that will increase uh, collaboration uh, in this field. And we are trying to test this concept, this project with Pulley dataset. So I will show a little bit because uh, it's, we are not uh, that at the end yet. But um, So microRNA, uh, they are small RNA molecules. Uh, with a size between 18, 23 nucleotides. They are processed in the nucleus from a longer precursor, and they go to the cytoplasm. So they bind through AGO to uh, an RNA molecule at the 3' prime uh, UTR. Uh, this will uh, lead to degradation or sequestration of the RNA, and the main goal is just gene, re uh, gene expression regulation, so just stop the production of the protein. Um, uh, what is happening is like actually there is no one single sequence microRNA for each precursor. With all this sequencing technology that appeared in 2007 or so, uh, we started to see that the, there is quite a variability um, from the, the mature microRNA annotating database like MIRBase or uh, MIRGINDB. And these uh, variabilities are very small. They are just few nucleotides. Uh, and it can be at the five prime at the beginning, at the end, three prime. It can be non-template addition. It can be SNPs uh, or, error or error sequencing. <laughs> um, so this is the important thing about isomers that I would like to, if you take something, it's like they exist. And actually, they express differently across tissue, across condition, across development stages. So it's something worthy to study. Uh, so what is happening right now, since all these new data, sequence data appear, is that the development of the tools are quite parallel and linear. So we have each tool uh, creating all this code from the beginning to the end. Uh, so from raw data to annotation, alignment, filtering, downstream analysis, visualization, everything. Uh, and what happens, so this is, this is becoming bigger, right? Because you come to the field that you see, OK, there are these tools, but oh, they are not exactly good for my specific data. right? This is, this is never a tool for everything. Uh, but then they find that they have to, again, start from the beginning, because it's very difficult to just start from one point and depend only on one tool that you don't know if it will be forever developed or not. Uh, so this is the, 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 the problem that we have, um, and it's increasing. So there is, the, there is no solution. I have been following this since 2008. Uh, still, we are in the same situation. Ideally, what you want is something more like a graph, where you have the different steps, different checkpoints, where people, the community, are defining standards. So researchers can focus in a very specific problem, like alignment, or like variant calling, or like annotation. And then you use any of them, or all of them. I don't know, I mean, without this um, exactly situation, like the variant calling, for instance, BC Bio will be impossible. I mean, Brad is very good, but coding all the tools that we are using BC Bio, it will require like two, three, four lifetime of him. Uh, so this is what I think that is the ideal situation 
uh, for any kind of uh, pipeline or data analysis. So here is the trick. So we didn't invade something from scratch. So I think that we got points for that, right? So we reduced uh, some uh, standard form already. Um, and it could be, I mean, it's GFF3 is actually for now, GTF can be as well. Um, and of course, I mean, the first columns, this is an example of merging DB. Uh, the first columns is just information about the positions and the source, data set, database, all this. What we use more is the last column, that is the attributes. So we adapted the last columns to have information that fits our data. Uh, and if you want to know all the attributes, you can go to mirtop gff 3 and you will have the full description. But I want you to stay with two, that is the variance, that is actually the definition of the isomers when you compare to the database, the reference, and then the expression of the samples uh, that you have in that particular project. Uh, so we decided as well to develop a tool because defining a pipeline uh, 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 format, I mean, nobody's going to say, okay, I'm going to dedicate all these months to change all my pipeline to this format because who knows? I mean, I don't have anything to do, right? Um, so we decided to help this a little bit with a Python tool. Um, it's uh, generating the GFF format from the most used tool right now, the ones that want to collaborate for now. Uh, it has some exporters to tools that only want annotation of the isomers and nothing else, that they only want to work with that and not do the whole pipeline again. And then some helpers for the typical uh, operation of the data. So we have this chat. Uh, so anyone who is interested and curious can go. We are looking for a logo, because with a logo, there are no sneak stickers. Without stickers, there are no free things to put in your computer. Uh, so if somebody is good or willing to give it a chat, just go to the 29 issue and just give us an idea. I'm very bad at that, so I'm not going to do it. <laughs> Um, so the current supported tools are BAM files that have information about the isomer aligned to the precursor, BCBI, of course, uh, that actually is a cluster, that is the tool is running inside, uh, Acerone Bench, Isomer, CI, Mirch2, and Pros. These are very used pipelines. Uh, these are the ones the developers wanted to contribute. We are open to any other tools, so if you know something, just come to us, and we will be happy to help and work together. Uh, the, the typical operations that we support right now are just general statistics about how many, how much of each, each uh, isomer in each sample, uh, joining GFF files, uh, compare one GFF against other, like if you have a truth data set, for instance, uh, and convert it to counts because of course, at the end, you want to do expression analysis of the data. So at some point, you want counts in a matrix format. Um, so to test this, uh, we are uh, using public data set. I mean, it's still on the review. We got the data sooner. Uh, it's, this paper is published in um, BioArchive. They generate different samples. We are going to focus in the human plasma RNA. So they ship this sample to different lab. Uh, and they did different replicates, different protocols, and use these to actually answer, well, first test our um, format to see if we actually have all the information needed. Uh, second, to debug the tool, because <laughs> these are like 100 samples, so we analyze everything, but we use only a few. So that helps a lot to debug the tool. Uh, but after that, ideally, it would be good to know at the isomer level like how's the reproducibility among replicate, among labs, among protocols, tools. Of course, everybody wants to do benchmarking of tools. I mean, it's not the main goal of this project, but we can do it. Um, and at the end, maybe we get some conditions to, to know how to clean the data. So we have some limitations, like MIRS2 did uh, the trimming by itself but, and BCBio, but then we have to share it with other tools because the trimming was complex. Uh, BCBio has an internal cutoff of discarding all that is uh, less than two counts. Uh, isomer CR only consider one type of isomer at three prime, while the other two consider more, so we will have variability there. And we cannot convert fully the acerone bench output. Uh, it's only a few of them that we are missing, um, but we are working on that. So this is the sample, the number of samples that we are working with. Two protocols, four labs, four replicates for each lab, four tools, or five, <laughs> you remember now. Um, so the first thing is the variability where 
like how many different micro microRNAs we detect. Uh, so the columns are the protocols, the rows are the labs, colors are tools for, and replicates are the shape of the point. So yeah, a lot of data, but what I want to look here is actually what is the variability. For me, the variability is among labs, like lab four, very low, and protocol as well. For sure, uh, los SNPs are very variable, but as I say, uh, they are full of error sequencing. There is no tool dealing with that right now. Uh, I found a few papers doing some custom thing, uh, and that's the reason why see, uh, everything is considered a SNP. Sure, you will have full of variability there because of error sequencing. So another way to plot this is in the x-axis, the complexity, that is number of different isomers, and the y-axis, abundance, that is the similar plot than before. And then each lab, we have different shapes. And then the size of the dot is try to see if we could somehow like discard uh, uh, reads with two or three counts, uh, something changed. So actually, there is quite there pretty together all the points. What varies a lot more is the, um, uh, the type of isomers, so the, the columns. Uh, we can see that the SNPs are kind of not contributed a lot to the total expression but they have a lot of different sequences. Again, error sequencing probably. Uh, isomere three prime, that is the first uh, column. They are actually contributing a lot uh, and the complexity is not that high. So you get an idea of the isomers uh, there. So red sticker is very complex figure. You can or listen here or listen in the conclusion and believe me, whatever you prefer. Uh, but the idea is kind of the same. So we have uh, just, uh, uh, we, can, we count the proportion of isomers that are detected at least in one uh, lab, in one replicate, that is the green point, or four replicates, well, two, three, or four, that is the pink point. So in theory, the shape will go down because you have, as we have in the filtering, to detect uh, the, the isomer in all the replicates. But actually, this is true only for the complexity, number of isomers, uh, because in the y-axis, all are quite flat, except for the SNPs. Uh, and in the, the x-axis, all go to 25%. So that means, so this is the conclusion you can get to that, is that 25% of unique sequences are detected by all the, all the replicates in the lab, but this counts for the 90% of the bundas. So this gives you an idea of uh, how the isomers are shaped. Um, isomere addition and isomere three prime are the most abundant. We have variability among lab in terms of coverage. Uh, isomere SNPs are super variable. Yeah, full of, er again, error sequencing. Uh, TrueSec is more variable in the SNPs, but tool actually are pretty consistent. So you can, you can actually go to the full results, full all figures in mid top the worry data uh, and the future direction is try to see what, the iso what are the isomers uh, that are reproducible among the replicates and, the, and then compare among labs, protocol, and tools so we can define some how, how to clean the data at isomer level. As well, we have other uh, topics like uh, how we make this idea to be used by everybody. Uh, and then uh, there are other uh, discussion about how to define microRNA, uh, uh, how to put it in the database, so you can, you are welcome in Mirtop Incubator to discuss that. Um, I want to give for the thanks uh, a slide. I want to say that I'm going to be here in the CodeFest, so if anybody is interested to uh, contribute to the project, we have a lot of issues that are for first uh, developers in the project that are kind of uh, easier than the others, so I'm more than welcome to work with you. And I want to, that, that, that I put a red sticker because I like a lot this uh, slide. I, when I was doing it, it's like, I saw all these logos from all these different universities and countries. And actually this happened just because there are organizations like BOSC that are promoting that. I discovered BOSC in 2010 and I say, oh, that is pretty awesome. Um, and now after, I don't know how many years, <laughs> I got to actually be in a project where this is true. So I want to thank them and of course the uh, committee for giving me the opportunity to show this to all of you and all of you to listen to me. I'm ready. <laughs>